Few tales are told of Hades, whose very name inspires fear and penitence, reminding us of the inevitable fate which we all share. I, however, mean to tell you such a tale. Listen carefully. Beyond the present chamber lies the outermost perimeter of Tartarus, promising terrifying dangers far beyond the Underworld Prince's reckoning. And I can reckon quite a bit. House of Hades, that dark and lavishly appointed lair of the Underworld's king, is home not just to him, but to his willful progeny. You know I can hear you, old man. <laughs> Infernal watchdog Cerberus regards the Underworld Prince with mixed emotions, from purest joy to deepest melancholy. You watch over things for me, won't you, boy? You know I'd take you if I could. There's a good boy. <laughs> the bedchambers of Prince Zagreus lie in a perpetual state of utter disarray. Despite his lord and master of the house, repeatedly insisting that he pick everything up. Oh, come on, it's not that bad, is it? Composed of such innumerable, ever-shifting, interlocking chambers, the underworld of Lord Hades all but guarantees the dead shall there remain until the end of time. Good thing I'm not dead. How you holding up, boy? Eating well lately? All three mouths full and happy? <laughs> Each terrifying maw of the infernal watchdog Cerberus responds affirmatively, one after the next, as if to reassure the ever-doubting prince. You don't like it when I pet your other heads, huh? No. What once was a small lounging area within the House of Hades now is sealed off in utter shambles since the multi-headed Cerberus tore the space apart, warning the missing prince. Cerberus destroyed the lounge again. Each time the prince delves back into the underworld, its ever-shifting chambers realign to frustrate his attempts to perhaps map it out. Built to ensure no one gets out. We'll see about that. None other than those in the trusted inner circle of Lord Hades are authorized to enter the intricate chambers connecting the vast regions of the underworld. But the prince decides to barge in anyway. I barred where I please. The once verdant plains of Asphodel are now engulfed in scintillating flame, having been flooded by the river Phlegathon whose hideously superheated contents could bring death swiftly even to those resistant to most heat. I'm only flame-resistant, not flame-proof. The rare, heavenly splendors of Elysium, reserved for only the most great of mortal souls, spread forth luxuriantly all about the fire-stepping prince. Luxuriantly? Really? You've always been there for me, boy. How's everything been going lately, boy? What's the good word? <laughs> the Underworld Prince's casual inquiry serves but to frustrate the Infernal Hound, as none of his three heads possess the gift and curse of speech. Look what I got for you, boy. <laughs> As one of Cerberus's heads receives the prince's gift, another muzzles something back into his hand. Thank you, boy. The courtyard of the House of Hades is kept neat and orderly, in contrast to the terrifying sprawl that lies beyond. It's not that orderly, really. The path from Tartarus is finally laid bare. Far above, the heat from Phlegathon, the river of flame, is faintly felt already, 
even as its dangers lie in wait. Lovely. Having traversed the flaming river Phlegathon to gain this vantage point, Relentless Sagris must now confront a foe of unimaginable savagery, who lies ahead, awaiting patiently its time to strike. Way to spoil the surprise, old man. The enshrouded river of forgetfulness, Lethe, flows through the hallowed chambers of Elysium, numbing old pains and memories of the most noble shades residing there. I'll have to give them new pains to recall. Shades of the dead mill constantly within the house, complaining of their woes and seeking audience from any who would listen. I listen. Huh? Hey boy, just me again. It report it's pretty dangerous out there even without you on guard duty all the time. The venerable Hound of Hell barely acknowledges the softly spoken prince's platitude, knowing full well the underworld is not as vigilantly guarded as in ages past. You are the best, you know that, don't you, boy? Damned lost souls with nowhere left to turn congregate in deepest Tartarus, where they fuse together with the earth itself into odious forms which defy description. They basically turn into big crystals. In the depths of Tartarus reside the most wretched of all the shades who linger for eternity within the underworld, whose lord and master is especially unkind to those attempting to cheat death. Lots of wretchedness to go around, I guess. Within the suffocating heat of Asphodel reside the vast majority of those who lived upon the earth and died. There they persist until the end of time. Or until I crush their bones to dust. The magnificently ominous facade of the great Elysian Stadium looms tall above the rabble-rousing prince, as if to goad him into such a competition which he cannot hope to win. Cheers for the vote of confidence, old man. Oh no, not this. The multi-headed Cerberus stands vigilant before the underworld's entryway. The tales of what happens to those foolish enough to attempt to pass are far too graphic to describe. So it's really come to this, boy. After everything we've been through. Well then. This is how it has to be. There's nothing left to say, except for on your guard. <laughs> no, but seriously, boy, I know why you're here. There has to be a way to make you look the other way. What if I help you with the Sater problem? Would you let me go? Please, I have to find Persephone, my mother. You know what this means to me. <laughs> After a moment's hesitation and deliberation, the voracious Hound of Hell parks once affirmatively toward the Prince, who sets off in search of something that can sate the monster's appetites. Good. Now I just need to head off the beaten path here and see what I can find. All right, boy, I got your favorite treat. But you have to promise to let me pass if I hand it over, okay? <laughs> Terrifying Cerberus accepts the fetid sack and scans the darkened hall for where best to consume the stomach-turning contents. I owe you one, boy. Hey, the lounge is open. A commemorative board adorns one of the stoic walls within the lounging area celebrating and proclaiming the accomplishments of those who serve Lord Hades best of all. Won't ever see my face up on that wall, I guess. The lounging area within the House of Hades is a dismal place to be, in spite of its intended purpose to enliven the house's grim inhabitants. It's better than nothing. The deepest reaches of the underworld the void from which all life and consciousness sprang forth during the dawn of time. The realm of chaos. A land almost unseen even to denizens of death's kingdom. 
Could you keep it down? From within a humble residence in Asphodel reverberates the golden sounding voice of Lorne Eurydice, who once attempted to escape the underworld and failed utterly, much like Prince Zagreus. You watch yourself, old man. You keep an eye on father for me, boy. Don't let him sour up everyone's mood. <laughs> Cerberus promises to do exactly that in his own way. The ancient casks of wine hidden within the recesses of the House of Lord Hades. Few have tasted the intoxicating vintage they contain, and fewer still are permitted to anywhere near their vicinity. Still waiting for the festive occasion when we'll open one of these. It is the dead of night, or the approximation of it in the realm of Hades. Prince of the Underworld, Zagreus, rises from a fitful slumber, with much mischief on his mind. Mischief? Me? I was just going to have a little look through Father's stuff. All is quiet at this time. Ever-dreaming Hypnos put a spell upon the house, as Willful Zagreus had asked of him. All are fast asleep, save for the Prince. It is exactly as he planned. Lower your voice, old man. I'm trying to be sneaky here. He ventures toward the stately throne of his Lord Father, half expecting to be caught, but ill expecting what he is about to find. I said shut up, old man. He does not know exactly what he seeks. He only knows that something always has felt off to him, that he does not belong. Who is he, really? Lord Hades never would indulge such questions. So Prince Zagreus would find out for himself. I'm not listening. He rifles through his Lord Father's possessions. There is not much of any import there. Ledgers and administrative parchment work. Correspondence from Olympus which he had ignored. No trace of any reference to his son. Then, there is the note, written finally in a hand and voice the likes of which the prince had never seen or heard. Thus did Prince of the Underworld Zagreus absorb the contents of this hidden letter, written in his mother's hand. His mother's hand? My mother's hand? Wait, what? You're saying this Persephone that she's my mother? But father always said that Nyx was m that liar. He lied to me. They both did. All my life. Uh, thus did the prince discover inadvertently the well-kept truth about his lineage. Entirely by chance, this did occur. Persephone, the one-time queen of all the underworld. Where had she gone? And why? Engulfed by newfound questions and his rage, the prince decided to confront his lord and master. Within the underworld's quietest, most solitary, darkest abyss, lies hidden evidence of the beginning of all things, of chaos, the most ancient sculptor that has shaped this world. I best take all the evidence I find. Amid Elysium's moss-covered chambers, carved of stone, stand untold numbers of eternal monuments in tribute to the greatest heroes which mortality can offer, there to honor them in life as well as death. This place is near as gloomy as the house. The vast temple of Styx and its innumerable dangers now are all that separate the underworld prince from the land outside which he so desperately longs to see. I've almost made it. Deep within the desecrated layer of the god-defiling satyrs lie the noisome contents of their profane rituals, so foul as to be indescribable. Cerberus just loves the stuff. Cerberus again accepts the sack. By 
quiet for now, boy. Hey, good to see you back here, boy. I'm glad you're back on guard duty. Even if it means having to find a way past you. You know you're just doing your job. <laughs> the fear-inducing hellhound eyes the underworld prince uneasily. His six ferocious eyes, each glistening within the dim light of the house. See you, boy. How's my favorite boy doing, huh? The searing flame and ashes of the river Phlegathon mean nothing to the ferryman Charon, who travels all the waters of the underworld bearing the dead, the damned, and all their fineries. I do enjoy dead people's fineries. Gigantic Cerberus accepts the prince's foul offering. Thanks, boy. The fate abetting prince perhaps believes it was through his own choice that he procured the fated list of minor prophecies, but it was preordained. Oh no, not this determinism thing again. A place of calm and respite. Whilst perhaps unimaginable in the underworld, occasionally is to be found, in fact. And not a moment too soon. At last, the willful prince has ventured all the way up to the surface of the mortal realm. Yet still, he is encased within the earth itself. The gateway to the underworld. A threshold from which there is no escape. We'll see about that. A crudely hewn network of tunnels grows from one of the cold temple's flanks, containing vicious denizens unwelcome in this realm, even in death. Satyr markings. Joyfully, the Hound of Hell accepts another satyr sack. See you, boy. The infernal wares of the Stygian boatman Charon lie sprawled about. Available for sale, Doom ever would be willing to quench the boatman's great thirst for riches. That will be me. Guess what, boy? Made it all the way to Asphodel last time. I fully understand how come you never liked it there. Now to trek on back, I guess. Take care. <laughs> Despite the underworld prince's optimism, his old companion, Cerberus, the multi-headed hound, maintains a somewhat sulky attitude for now. Of you. Not everybody knows exactly how to give you pets and live to tell of it, right, boy? Permit the dog his rest. <laughs> Each savage maw of Cerberus salivates in anticipation of the next time to feed. Well, see you around. The most violent wretches of Tartarus are sealed away even from other condemned souls. They're only visitors, those fool enough to attempt escape. Let's do this again sometime. Each violent countenance of Cerberus agrees the Sator Sack must be destroyed. I can go. I made it. I'll be on the frozen overlook. Await the first glimpse of the sun to your left, and onward through the cold. Sure hope this works, Nix. surface, windswept, racked by freezing cold, nonetheless instills within the prince a sense of awe and the sublime, for it is unlike anything that he has seen. It's beautiful.
thing. That's the sun. Is this a cat? Who's there? Um, hello? Hello indeed. Pray, who might you be wandering all the way out here? You're trespassing on private property, you know. Speak up. Um, you must be Persephone. My name is Zagreus, and I think I might be your son. What? How dare! Get out of here! Get out, or I shall make you! Out with you! No, so then you are her. I, I don't care if you hate me, but I'm not leaving until I get some answers. I never even knew you existed. Why did you leave me? You died. You... you died. Those burning feet, they... sputtered out when you were born. But... now you're standing here before me. How? I died? I died? What, you mean permanently died? But I'm alive. Oh, gods. You never even knew I existed either. Alive. Sagrius, he... even kept your name. You live. How can this be? You live. You live. Oh, the cruel face. My son. Mother. In short, I beat him, finally, though he did everything he could to prevent our meeting here like this. But there's something he wanted me to tell you in the end. He said to tell you Cerberus is doing very well. Ah, uh, he told you that, did he? That's good. That's good. Though, tell me something, Zagreus. How is it that you found me? To have journeyed all this way, I scarce believe it. Zagreus? Uh, oh, it's... guess I'm just a little tired, that's all. Not accustomed to the weather, as I think you call it. No. No, that isn't it. It's that... You cannot stay here. You can't stay here. Really, you're... <laughs> kicking me out? Why? The fates are cruel, Zagreus. You're bound to that place. Same as your father. So they would have us say goodbye. For now. My heart soars knowing you live. But then it breaks that our time together was so brief. No. I can... Come back. I can come back. Now that I found you, he... Maybe he'll just let me come back. You tell him I demand it. And I demand he also tell me how come he, or for that matter, Nyx, never sent notice that you lived. Olympus is all rife with schemers. But I was so naive to think that they were different. I'll tell him. I'll tell him. I feel awful. I... I have to go. The sticks shall take you then. Oh, Zagreus. Farewell, my son. Won't you come back to me? When you are able, please, come back. I shall be waiting here. However long it takes. However long it takes. <gasps> Can't hold 
Uh, mother, I have to get back there. The surface, windswept, racked by freezing cold, nonetheless instills within the prince a sense of awe and the sublime, for it is unlike anything that he has seen. It's beautiful. The vast and multitudinous riches of both the surface and the underworld are hoarded by the river boatman Charon, whose services are often tendered to the wealthiest within Elysium. He really gets around. Not far from here, the dead begin their journey to their final resting place down in the depths below. And so the river boatman Charon often passes through. Generous selection of his wares. The widely feared and many headed Cerberus, the underworld sentinel, presides over the entrance to this realm, devouring whole those fool enough to make attempts to flee. He loves to eat. Can you blame him? Cerberus picks up with some vigilant Cerberus and decides to look the other way this once. Thank you, boy. You're my good boy. Yes, you are. I found her, boy. My mother. Persephone, you remember her, don't you? She was pleased to hear about you. But I couldn't stay for long, and I have to find her again. So, guess I'll see you at the temple, then. <laughs> The ghoulish features of the much-reviled Hound of Hell all soften instantly upon the mention of a certain name. Briefly, then, the monster is at peace. The fathomless expanses hidden in darkest corners of the underworld stretch well past the notice of Lord Hades himself. And yet, the interfering prince somehow discovers passage there. Wasn't all that hard to find, really. Each violent countenance of Cerberus agrees the Sator Sack must be destroyed. Thanks, boy. Fruits and vegetables thrive within the hidden gardens of Persephone, the one-time queen of all the underworld. A world of life, far from the realm of death. What are these things? Oh, it's you! I'm back. I begged the fates that you'd return to me. Perhaps I ought to be more careful how I speak of them. Tell me, how was your journey? What happened? Father didn't make it any easier for me. Nor would he tell me why he never sent for you after you left. So, I don't know what's going on still, but I wanted to see you again. I wanted to see you too. Come, speak quickly with me, that our time together here may be as full as possible, all right? I just... I need to know what happened between you and father. Why are you here and not with us? I couldn't live with myself anymore down there. After I left Olympus, a long story in itself, I came to be with your father in the underworld. It was a shock to say the least. The others in your father's house were welcoming enough, but I never felt that I belonged. I know the feeling, I think, but you stayed long enough to have me. Those whom I've spoken to about you, it's as you said, they have fond memories of you. And then you even had a child. Did father, did he mistreat you? No, no. Your father could be very difficult. 
Though he was gentle with me. Soon enough, we got on fine. Better than fine at times, but... When I was with child, why, I struggled terribly. Because... Child born of surface dwellers could not live down there. Could not live down there according to whom, exactly? The fates? According to them, yes. According to your father and to Nyx. Even having heard, I took my chances anyway. But when you emerged stillborn, it was too much. I fled. I fled and came to reside here. Above the notice of the underworld. Beneath the notice of Olympus. Uh, but why would Father lie to you? If he never wanted you, or never wanted me, surely he had the means. I don't know. I'm wondering the same. But, oh, look at you, Zagreus. We're running out of time. It's happening again. Stay with me, please. I'm trying, but I can't stay that much longer, I don't think. Oh, my dear son. Then please, ask Hades what you asked of me. Why he would lie. Tell him I must know, the same as you. And you farewell. Until we meet again. Until we... Father, you. Here, boy. Just as long as one of your three heads enjoys these pets. <laughs> All three of Cerberus the Watchdog's terrifying countenances greet the prince. All manner of fruits and vegetables thrive within the hidden gardens of Persephone the one-time queen of all the underworld. The world of life, far from the realm of death. What are these things? Fang-bearing Cerberus directs all three of his attentions toward the Sator Sack. I can go. I'll just set that there. of the softness of the richly woven rug the prince procured cannot be fully felt beneath his flame-licked feet. I guess it's soft. The ever-energetic prince, alas, remains incapable of sitting still, even with such a supple, comfortable seating arrangement nestled in his chambers now. I just prefer to stand, all right? A beautifully decorated, subtly enchanted bowl containing traces of the hapless prince's past attempts to flee the underworld now accents a particularly cluttered corner of his room. Always wanted my own scrying pool. As many chances as it takes. The river Styx flows infamously through the underworld, offering the boatman Charon expeditious travel from the realm of mortals to the lowest depths where many of their shades reside forever. Too bad I can't just take the ferry to the surface. The act of sorcery often ends in an untimely death and an eternity in Tartarus for careless souls, though some are able to perfect the trade and take up permanent residence elsewhere. I'm sure the Witch's Circle will reconvene soon enough. The prince persuades the underworld's ferocious guardian to move aside. Thank you, boy. Circumstances call for more pets. Hey, did you see, boy? The old lounge is good as new again. You ought to check it out. 
Just don't annihilate it like you did last time. Each savage countenance of Cerberus lights up to hear the news. Doubtless beginning to assemble stratagems for ravaging the lounging area once more. The prince persuades the underworld's ferocious guardian to move aside. See you, boy. I mean, old father's nice to you at least, isn't he, boy? I hope I haven't been inconveniencing you too much with all the visits to the temple lately, boy. Say, how do you get back? Charon giving you a lift. <laughs> Thus asks the prince his question of the guardian of the gates of hell, knowing full well the multi-headed monster keeps a wide berth of the river boatman, as to all with any sense. <laughs> Just kidding, boy. Within the delicately hewn constructions of Elysium exist places of peace so utterly serene and absolute as mortal kind is seldom to experience during the average short and often painful coil. Is this really as good as it gets for mortal kind? Each violent countenance of Cerberus agrees the Sator Sack must be destroyed. I always feel better talking to you, boy. <laughs> Cerberus makes no attempt to move. Take care, boy. Cerberus moves for no one, but for Satus Axe, he can make an exception. For now, boy. You always have more pets for the greatest boy. Do not let him manipulate you, Cerberus. Each savage maw of Cerberus salivates in anticipation of the next time to feed. Why, I can scarce believe my eyes. Is that you, boy? Cerberus, look who it is! He's back! <laughs> Cerberus looks mournfully toward the prince. No need to drag the dog into this, father. Anything you say to me, you say in front of Cerberus. You might even learn a thing or two from him of listening and of obedience. Each violent countenance of Cerberus agrees the Sator Sack must be destroyed. Bye for now, boy. The prince compels the multi-headed hound to let him pass. Thank you, boy. Who's the best three-headed boy? The many-headed Cerberus is busy thinking of his next savory meal. Cerberus moves for no one, but for Satus Axe, he can make an exception. I can go. More pets? More pets. Cerberus looks mournfully toward the prince. Each violent countenance of Cerberus agrees the Sator Sack must be destroyed. See you, boy. A vast and intricately crafted mosaic depicts the underworld king presiding over the enormity of his domain, whilst its chthonic residents look on in awe of him. He's not really that great. 
the stoic lord and master of the house, possesses wealth beyond imagining, a portion of which he has used for a crisp set of attire for every passing day. I knew it. It's just capes. In his lord father's very private chambers, Zagreus, the lock-removing prince, discovers a most delicately painted likeness of none other than Persephone herself. A coat of dust suggests it has remained here for some time. He's never stopped thinking of her. Oh, what a fool. Prince Zagreus once more offers to Cerberus one of his favorite sacks. Thanks, boy. You like it when you get pets like this, don't you, boy? The dog has enough troubles of his own. The triple-headed monster Cerberus is dutifully sitting there as ever. The shattered weapons of the Siege of Ilion are now reduced to window dressings in the prince's ever-cluttered lair. Bronze weapons. Made crudely, but they had the right idea. The valor of the great-hearted Achilles is immortalized upon the prince's wall, as though it might stir up more courage from within. Achilles must have been incredible back when he was alive. The prince compels the multi-headed hound to let him pass. I owe you one, boy. Well, look at you, boy. Never seen you quite so perky, relatively speaking, of course. Big, tough guy like yourself. You must have missed Mother just as much as she missed you. Well, you've got plenty of time for catching up on things now. The monstrous, triple-headed beast of Hades would perhaps be overcome with pure emotion by the joyous circumstances, were he only capable of this. How dare you, sir? The Garden of Persephone the Queen, off-limits to the prince throughout his life, now is laid bare to him at last in all its splendor. Not like Mother's Cottage, but not bad. The monster's solitary weakness, Satyr Sax, proved terribly effective once again. I owe you one, boy. Thus, having once more gained at the surface of his grim-faced father's realm beneath the earth, resourceful Zagreus makes his way toward the one-time abode of Radiant Persephone. It is a journey of considerable distances, which he has already completed many times, and which has always ended in the same result. So, imagine he made it there with just time enough to water the crops and tidy up a bit before. Oh, I'm sure Mother's cottage is perfectly fine. Bet you're happy to see Mother home again, huh, boy? Only wish you could have told me about her before. <laughs> the hell-born monster Cerberus contentedly ignores the prince's callous, inconsiderate remark. Hey. Circumstances call for more pets. sleeping underworld prince arises with the feeling that the brief nap he intended as a respite from the rigors of the day or night apparently was none too brief at all oh, i'm late for work father's going to kill me responsibility rejecting zagreus strides down his father's hall quite unconcerned about the urgency with which he is expected to behave under a set of circumstances such as this going as fast as i can you hurry up the door to the administrative chamber beckons just beyond the hall the prince perchance believes that he may enter quietly without drawing the notice of those laboring within you better not give me away, old man. I suggest you hurry in there, lad. 
talk later. Let's not keep your father waiting. Sorry. The day or night's duties are sheer simplicity itself. At least at first, as when the prince simply signs in to signal the commencement of a shift. Oh, God. Get on with your responsibilities. Security reports concerning failed escape attempts from Tartarus require timely verification and official response, neither of which Prince Zagreus is fit to give. Uh. Records of expired house contractor renovations line a desk in the administrative chamber, though the Prince has absolutely no desire now to organize them alphabetically by date. None whatsoever, yes. Attendance records of the working shades who toil for the house need to be verified. The shades due compensation rapidly approved. And yet the prince cannot remember all the necessary steps. I haven't forgotten. No one told me. The often failing prince attempts to sort the ledgers in the fashion necessary for the proper keeping of his father's realm. Damn it. That is not correct. The hard-laboring shades responsible for the administration of the Prince's father's realm merely look on at the Prince's ill-fated attempts. Oh, come on. Incorrect. The relaxation-loving Prince never paid suitably enough attention to learn properly how to arrange the record bookings of the regions of his father's realm. Doesn't make any sense. That's not- This set of delicate responsibilities is easily achieved. At least by someone capable and trained to do the work, unlike the oft-distracted Underworld Prince. What? Enough, boy. Wrap it up. At last, the work-disliking Prince records a summary of the results of his attempts to be of any use to the administrative needs of his grim father's house. Okay, I'm done. So, can I go yet, father? Not only were you late again, but then you also failed to perform even the simplest tasks that I had asked repeatedly that you complete. How many chances do you need at this? I am too lenient with you. Too lenient? Instead of lambasting me non-stop, have you considered maybe training me some more to do this fascinating work to your satisfaction? You'll forgive me if I didn't memorize every laborious detail the last time you performed your monologue about how all this works. Excuse me? If I'm not mistaken, you're deflecting your incompetence toward me? As though the Goddess of Wisdom herself has come to aid you in your time of need. I could replace you here and now with any number of simple shades hungry to work here. Then why don't you? I don't want any of this. I'm not the one who drew the short lot with your brothers and got stuck here forever. Why am I having to do this senseless parchment pushing for you? Why are you stuck? You're not. You're fired. I was wrong to think you were prepared to take on any responsibility at all. And don't you ever invoke your uncles here again, or I'll have you cast into the lowest pits of Tartarus. Now get out of my administration and my sight. Uh, at least I can't be late for that job anymore. The prince persuades the underworld's ferocious guardian to move aside. Bye for now, boy. More pets? More pets. Notoriously vicious Cerberus is watching quietly his master's court. Well, take care. With its just right softness and death themed embroidery, the new bedding of Prince Zagreus is the envy of all those who wish to rest in peace. Already bought it. No need to sell me on it, old man. Prince Zagreus once more offers to Cerberus one of his favored sacks. Once more, tenacious Zagreus achieves his lofty goal, 
and just as every time before, except with some sort of new twist of fate, perhaps. He goes a little distance, then he dies. How? Uh, well, that was pretty good, all in all. I mean, old father's nice to you, at least, isn't he, boy? Oh, please. Cerberus is preoccupied with scratching and biting at himself. The Erinyes, known also as the Furies. They are the trusted sentinels of Lord Hades, charged with torturing the worst of mortal kind and ridding the underworld of any fool enough to trespass where they do not belong. They'll just have to try harder next time. Thus has the prince again persuaded fearsome Cerberus to get out of his way. Thank you, boy. Having already seen the splendid cottage of Persephone sufficient times, the stubborn underworld prince Nevertheless, attempts to go there once again. Although, his memory of it shall have to do. Ah! Did pretty well that time. The Guardian of Hell itself decides the time has come for a short break and snack. See you, boy. How's everybody doing? The cool, purified waters of the Styx are available in limitless supply to all servants of the God of the Dead, authorized to work endlessly within the House Administrative Chamber. The job's number one perk. No thanks. The Administrative Chamber's ever-working shades remain utterly dedicated to their thankless toil, all because of an inspiring rendition of how dedicated they ideally should be. Everybody hang in there. The Prince persuades the Underworld's ferocious guardian to move aside. Go. Reflecting on his victory, Prince Zachris observes how death can take hold in so many different ways, at times quite slowly, and at other times. Here, boy, just as long as one of your three heads enjoys these pets. Cerberus is busily considering upon what else to gnaw. Be good, boy. Each violent countenance of Cerberus agrees the Sator Sack must be destroyed. Bye for now, boy. The master of this realm, Lord Hades, states that death is inescapable. There is considerable credence to his claim. What? Oh, Cerberus. Doubtless you deserve the biggest thanks that this house still stands, don't you? Did you enjoy the treat I brought you from the surface? <laughs> the surface treat devouring hound of hell provides the queen a most decidedly affirmative response. I thought you might. You wouldn't know it wasn't made of meat, I'll bet. I'll see if we can't grow you plenty more. The visage of the goddess Aphrodite now adorns the prince's bedchambers, perhaps to provide consolation after when next he dies. Aphrodite herself. Wonder if I could get this signed. 
the ever-smiling, wine-washed countenance of the great Lord Dionysus now adorns the prince's chamber wall, thus radiating questionable influence. It's like we share a bond, man. Fang-bearing Cerberus directs all three of his attentions toward the satyr sack. Thanks, boy. Imagine, if you will, the underworld prince soon meets one of his typical ignoble deaths. Huh? The monster's solitary weakness, Sator Zax, proved terribly effective once again. Thank you, boy. The underworld prince is getting rather good at this, but let us say he perished anyhow. No, wait! Showed you that time, father. Thus has the prince again persuaded fearsome Cerberus to get out of his way. I owe you one, boy. There are a myriad of tales to be told, of both great deeds and of vainglorious defeats. And this has been a tale that falls somewhere in the middle overall. Oh, no! Who's the best three-headed boy? Cerberus cannot be bothered at this time. The Guardian of Hell itself decides the time has come for a short break and snack. See you, boy. Just when his victory was all but certain, a fissure opens underneath the feet of the ill-fated prince, and from it vents a cloud of superheated water vapor, steam as it is known. And probably you know what happens next. No! Prince Zagreus once more offers to Cerberus one of his favorite sacks. I can go. Prince Zagreus proceeded onward toward a certain doom, entirely too graphic to describe. The Hound of Hell rests peacefully upon his favored spot. You don't like it when I pet your other heads, huh? No. Prince Zagreus once more offers to Cerberus one of his favored sacks. Gain the surface once again. Prince Zagreus breathes deeply of the wildflowers and the roses and the like, among which one of them contains an allergen so intolerably potent that it causes this. How? You're my good boy. Yes, you are. Cease bothering the dog. The ever-faithful Cerberus remains resting steadfastly in his spot. Bye for now. There's a good boy. Thought you'd like that. Cerberus is overjoyed to have received such a delicious treat. 
fang-bearing Cerberus directs all three of its attentions toward the Sator Sack. Bye for now, boy. Horned creatures are familiar to Zagreus, having fought countless satyrs and the like. But he discovers this time that not even satyrs possess the sheer, ferocious power of a startled mountain goat. Gah! Cerberus acknowledges the prince with an affection tempered well with time. Goodbye for now. Oh. Only the very best treats for my best friend, right, boy? <laughs> Cerberus yelps in merriment upon receiving such a generous offering. Zagreus once more offers to Cerberus one of his favored sacks. I owe you one, boy. Although there are innumerable ways for one to die, our danger-seeking prince has come to know a sizable variety. It is my humble duty to oblige my favorite boy with all the treats as I am able to procure. Knowing the watchdog's never-ending appetite for treats, the prince obliges him. More pets are certainly in order here. Within the recesses of the administrative chamber lies the eldest sigil of the master's house, a symbol of the fate given authority to rule beneath the earth and means by which to travel the entirety of all that dark domain. Could never get that blasted thing to work for me. Thus has the prince again persuaded fearsome Cerberus to get out of his way. Boy. The often patient Zagreus appears to take repeated deaths in stride, and so here comes another one for him. Ah! If I don't pet your other heads, don't bite my arm off, do you? You like this stuff, don't you, boy? Well, good, because I like sneaking it over to you. <laughs> the delectable taste of nectar is enough to briefly sate even the ferocious appetite of the Hound of Hell. Terrifying Cerberus is busy gathering his strength for when next he shall bar the Prince's path. See you, boy. The prince compels the multi-headed hound to let him pass. Thanks, boy. Imagine that Prince Zagreus experiences some sort of joyous outcome for a change, in contrast to the arbitrary and unfortunately painful death he shall experience now. This nectar not fancy enough for you, boy, is that it? You've developed quite a delicate palate at your distinguished age. <laughs> Though having little appetite remaining for the lightness of nectar's flavor, the multi-headed monster of the underworld nevertheless accepts. <laughs> Each violent countenance of Cerberus agrees the satyr sack must be destroyed. See you, boy. 
The often dying prince, having achieved his purpose, then reflects upon his life and deeds, remembering his many past demises with such vivid clarity that this occurs. Thus has the prince again persuaded fearsome Cerberus to get out of his way. Thanks, boy. Snakes and serpents rank amongst the creatures somewhat known to Zagreus due to their presence in the underworld. So it is with delight that he approaches one upon the surface, greeting it as a familiar friend. It greets him venomously back using its fangs. Uh, no. You don't let anybody in or out of this place, do you, boy? You know, after dying in some wretched manner, giving pets to my good boy sure helps me get back on my feet. Thanks for being here for me. The burning embers and the eyes of monstrous Cerberus, notorious Hound of Hell, reveal that he too is amenable to the pets of which the Underworld Prince speaks, and in fact is deeply grateful for the quantity of them. Speaking of which... Amongst the parchment records of the dead and punished are the sealed documents known as the Knave King Sentence, forcing said king to endlessly toil with a boulder till the end of time. I'll just patch this through to the house contractor then. After deliberating briefly, Cerberus concludes that yes, he shall accept the sack. See you, boy. Beyond this point lies such a horrifying fate that we had better speak no more of it for now. Ah! The many-headed Cerberus is busy thinking of his next savory meal. Bye. Cerberus moves for no one, but for Satus Axe, he can make an exception. I can go. Mere moments from his final victory, the prince, in his great haste, ignored surveying each side of a rather busy crossing, where a swiftly passing chariot collided with him very forcefully. That's right, boy. Ambrosia just for you. You're going to love it. Pretty much every creature, living or dead, does. The six eyes of the hideous Hound of Hell go wide at once from having received the exquisite gift of rare Olympian Ambrosia. The creature is rather beside himself. What? Prince Zagreus once more offers to Cerberus one of his favorite sacks. I owe you one, boy. After defeating his Lord Father yet again, Prince Zagreus begins to shiver and catch cold. And, as is well known, there sadly is no cure for such a thing. Oh, damn it! You're such a good boy, aren't you, Cerberus? Yes, you are. Guarded the place while I was out, and even let my son come visit me. <laughs> the ever-vigilant and terrifying Cerberus merely accepts the praise. 
Having invested heavily into the cooking area within the House of Hades, the empty-stomached Zagreus can nonetheless find nothing fit to eat. It's all right, wasn't hungry anyway. The fearsome Cerberus accepts the satyr sack. Thank you, boy. So complicated is the path to the well-hidden cottage of Persephone, that surface-walking Zagreus, on this particular occasion, sadly zigs instead of zags, plummeting from off a precipice into most familiar waters. Ah! The fearsome Cerberus accepts the satyr sack. For now, boy. As he explores the wonders of the world, Prince Zagris discovers a quaint farm in which he carelessly trespasses, stepping on a farming tool which swoops up and strikes him in the forehead fatally. Prince Zagreus once more offers to Cerberus one of his favorite sacks. See you, boy. The clever minded prince again eluded to certain death, up to a certain point, but then, predictably, made one of his fatal mistakes again. Who are you? It's the spot, doesn't it, boy? I know you're caught up in the middle of all this and having to weigh your loyalties more than you'd like. I'm sorry we're putting you through this. The Underworld Prince's next attempt to bribe the monstrous triple-headed hellhound into further liking him proves once again successful, as the kingly gift of heavenly ambrosia is beyond compare. You had enough to eat lately, haven't you, boy? Cerberus is comfortably at rest, observing all. The Guardian of Hell itself decides the time has come for a short break and snack. I owe you one, boy. Upon the surface realm, the mortal loving prince would doubtless find that death still comes in a variety of different forms. One of the most common, yet perhaps least interesting, involves simply waiting long enough until. Again? Severus, not to get all sentimental on you, but... Oh, who am I kidding? Look, you've been with me my entire life. I know you're here at home partly because of me, aren't you? The bond between a hound and its master is as hard as adamant. Cerberus, the fearsome monster born of hell and guardian of its gates, answers firstly to the prince's father. But it turns out, the prince may be the next best thing. You're the best boy in the whole world. Even if heads beta and gamma don't much care for pets, do they? I've got more than enough lined up for you, though. Count on it. If I don't pet your other heads, don't bite my arm off. Deal? Permit the dog his rest. <laughs> Cerberus acknowledges the prince with an affection tempered well with time. The dead have utterly no use for sustenance, although they try to feast upon it anyway, as though imagining the customs of the mortal life brings them some sense of peace. I wish I did not know that. There's a good one. 
Prince Zagreus once more offers to Cerberus one of his favorite sacks. Thank you, boy. Then, uh, valiantly striking Zagreus was set upon by seven bloodless slam dancers and slain, or something of the sort. No, no! Cerberus is preoccupied with scratching and biting at himself. Each violent countenance of Cerberus agrees the satyr sack must be destroyed. Thanks, boy. Having achieved his goal, the underworld prince discovers that the mortal realm is utterly bereft of the life-threatening excitement to which he has grown accustomed, and the lack of anything of note to do. The sheer mundanity results in this. Vigilant Cerberus decides to look the other way this once. I can go. Cold out there. Having ventured successfully much farther than before, the surface seeking prince encounters setbacks far too hideous to be described. No, no! The ever-faithful Cerberus remains resting steadfastly in his spot. Gigantic Cerberus accepts the prince's foul offering. For now, boy. In his great hurry to explore the countryside, the hapless footed prince steps on the peel of a most exotic, sallow colored fruit and tumbles backward with such sudden violent force that you know what occurs. No! Cerberus is busily considering upon what else to gnaw. Concealed in the dark recesses of the underworld is the land of Erebus, wherein the dead await eternal sentencing. They long for the attention and good graces of their master, the Lord Hades. Is this where Father's goons assemble to come after me? The prince compels the multi-headed hound to let him pass. Thanks, boy. Alas, the wisely spoken Zagreus stumbled upon a pit of deadly spears, perhaps. Uh, no! The Hound of Hell barely regards the prince having been sated for the time. The fearsome Cerberus accepts the satyr sack. I can go. The hellish watchdog snarls at the listless shades crowding about the court. The monster's solitary weakness, satyr sacks, proved terribly effective once again. I owe you one, boy. <laughs> Cerberus looks mournfully toward the prince. The fearsome Cerberus accepts the satyr sack. Thank you, boy. Just then, the carefree running underworld prince runs headlong into a thick and deadly wall of stone painted to look like the way out. <laughs> Cerberus cannot be bothered at this time. 
contract I'm looking for should be back there. Nestled among the towering administrative parchment work of the long since deceased, lies an old document concerning a special pact signed by a once living court musician who attempted vainly to rescue his wife from death. Okay, it should be dispatched over to the house contractor now. Remember, hang in there. Vigilant Cerberus decides to look the other way this once. See you, boy. The limitless variety of fauna dwelling on the surface brings to Zagreus no shortage of delight. Though when he makes an effort to communicate with one, its eyes so full of calm intelligence, he learns that bears are not as gentle as they seem. Cerberus lies as ever at the foot of his Lord Master's throne. Cerberus moves for no one, but for Satosax, he can make an exception. Fight for now, boy. All right, father. Terrifying Cerberus is busy gathering his strength for when next he shall bar the prince's path. Till next time. Vigilant Cerberus decides to look the other way this once. See you, boy. The much feared Cerberus licks endlessly at something on the floor. Cerberus again accepts the sack. The never learning Zagreus then carelessly fell off a precipice or something, plunging him into the rapids of the Styx. Oh, damn it! The vicious, triple headed Cerberus shows some restraint for now. Prince Zagreus once more offers to Cerberus one of his favored sacks. Thanks, boy. Filled with such confidence, the prince neglected to avoid um, stepping on a toxic strain of fungus. So rare you'd not have heard of it. No. Cerberus is uninterested in conversing at this time. Vigilant Cerberus decides to look the other way this once. I can go. Despite having transcended past the confines of the underworld yet again, Prince Zagreus proves utterly unable to get past this point. Again? It's done, Mother. Father, the invitations. Personally sent to everyone with whom I've been in contact. So what do we do now? Excellent, Sagrius. Congratulate him, Hades. On a job well done. Uh. Persephone, how can you be so certain your request was executed to your satisfaction? It's known as trust, Hades. Or faith. They're similar. Try one sometime. It'll be good for you. As for what we do next, why, we have a great big feast we must prepare. This house is not a suitable location for such guests. Dionysus alone shall bring ruin to this place. Or... Uh, the faith thing that you said. Yes, good. Now then, we have a lot of work to go around, so why don't we call everyone on staff and let them in on this, and dole out suitable responsibilities, all right? All right. All right. 
All right. Thus did all of Olympus journey deep into the underworld, all together for the very first time. The Queen Persephone revealed herself in all her splendor, much to their surprise, and told them everything she indicated to her son. She eloped with Grimlord Hades, she said, mothering a fire-stepping prince who sought to reconnect with his extended family. Hades and Persephone at first refused his wish, but so moved were they by his relentless struggles to the surface that at last they decided to heed their willful Zagreus and reach out, for his and everybody's sake. The Olympians listened to all this in stunned silence. Then Zeus himself began to laugh. Welcome back into the family, he said. After the shock subsided, the festivities began. I say, big brother, you and your better half put on a positively smashing night. It's a relief for all of us, knowing Persephone is safe and sound, and mother to as noble of a son as my good nephew there. Well, little brother, the Queen and I in turn appreciate you all taking time out of your doubtless busy lives to come all this distance to my house. I'm certain that it's very modest in comparison to Mount Olympus, but I trust that you were suitably entertained. Oh, <laughs> of course, of course, Hades. Now then, farewell, and let us keep in better touch from here. Hmm. Farewell indeed, Lord Zeus. When finally the great feast ended, all the Olympians returned to their mountain abode, fully satisfied. As for the house of Hades, it required thorough cleansing, from the rafters to the floor. Such revelry, of course, is unbecoming of the name of Hades and the fearsome reputation of the underworld. For if mortals were to have no fear of death, then they would have no fear of anything at all. A well-kept family secret, then, this would live on to be. I'd say that went about as well as could have been expected. And the cleanup wasn't all that bad, for the most part. Well, fortunate Uncle Zeus seemed to catch on right away and went along with it. But this whole elaborate tale you spun, I remember how hurt I felt when I found out Father lied to me about you. Now we're lying to Olympus. What if they find out? Even if they don't, I don't like it. Zagreus, I may not be an expert, but here's what I've come to understand about how families work. At least our own. The thing is, how we speak to one another is even more important than the words we use. I think, deep down, everyone in our family knows this. You're saying they all knew you weren't being perfectly honest and went along with it anyway. I guess the pomegranate thing in particular was a bit of a stretch. The common ground in our family is that we want peace. Besides Ares, though even he would rather the conflict occur elsewhere. That elaborate tale, it's less a deception and more a concession. A way of saying, let's move on from the past and start anew. No hard feelings. You don't have hard feelings? What about Father? What about Demeter? Well, let's see. My hard feelings are nothing next to the joy of having my son in my life. Your father never imagined his relationship with me could be out in the open. And my mother, she's just glad I'm alive. And Uncle Zeus is glad things didn't turn out worse for him. I get the sense he acts a bit impulsively at times and deals with the consequences later. What can I tell you, Zagreus? We're family. You said it yourself to me before. We're stuck with one another. That any of us like each other in the slightest. It's a wonder, and a blessing, I think. Yeah, I know what you mean. Thanks, Mother. I think I'll be heading out again soon. See you when I get back. Sounds good. I'll see you then. Joyfully, the Hound of Hell accepts another satyr sack. Thank 
you, boy. We're all very proud of you, boy. You were so well behaved at the feast. I was worried sick one uncle or the other was going to set you off at some point, but you were patience incarnate. Thanks for helping show our extended family a good time. How infernal Cerberus of the Hound of Hell managed to maintain civilized behavior throughout the duration of the recent feast remains a mystery to all who attended. The stalwart casks of wine within the House of Hades now are almost entirely devoid of content, having bravely stood against the combined thirst of the Olympians during a certain feast. They fought bravely, but Lord Dionysus was too strong. Prince Zadrius once more offers to Cerberus one of his favorite sacks. Bye for now, boy. <laughs> Cerberus is uninterested in conversing at this time. Well, see you later then. Cerberus moves for no one. But for Satyr Sax, he can make an exception. Thank you, boy. Bye. Amid the wondrous, ever springing garden of Persephone, Prince Zagreus discovers a greenish plant of some sort, supple skinned and covered all in spines. A bit too small to see until it is too late. Ah! Still can't get over our gift from the Olympians. It's glorious. A majestic gilded edifice of Mount Olympus, crafted with the utmost care from the true mountain stone, now shines forever brightly, even in the dim light of the House of Hades, as a parting gift from the Lord Master's kin. The handiwork of Lord Hephaestus himself. Sounds like he's been rather busy. The fearsome Cerberus accepts the Satyr Sack. Thanks, boy. Just then, uh, how about a very small, yet very deadly beetle landed upon Hydra slaying Zagreus, ending his attempt. Ah! Each savage maw of Cerberus salivates in anticipation of the next time to feed. Vigilant Cerberus decides to look the other way this once. Fight for now, boy. So joyfully did Zagreus attempt to gain the surface that why he just rose too quickly. And we know how that one goes from Icarus's tail. Huh? How about we put this there? immovable an object intricately carven solely for the purposes of recreation now resides within the pleasure-seeking prince's chambers although his lack for an opponent limits its appeal face me yourself old man a delicately crafted instrument of music making now resides within the clamor causing prince's chambers Doubtless fearing, if it could, his heavy-handed touch. Can't be that hard to play, can it? A massive set of weights, positioned carefully in line of sight of any visitors, shall doubtless make them think the prince is stronger and in better shape than in reality. Thus has the prince again persuaded fearsome Cerberus to get out of his way. Vicious, triple-headed Cerberus shows some restraint for now. Take care, okay? 
The prince compels the multi-headed hound to let him pass. I can go. Having somehow defeated Grim Lord Hades in a thrilling fight, Prince Agrius discovers it was all a dream. A rather deadly nightmare, actually. Who are you? Cerberus again accepts the sack. See you, boy. As he journeys to his mother's cottage in the cold, loudly speaking Zagreus calls out to hear the echo of his voice, the blast of sound causing a substantive amount of ice and snow to break off from a nearby mountaintop and fall, and fall, and... Ah! The many-headed Cerberus is busy thinking of his next savory meal. Well, see you. Thus has the prince again persuaded fearsome Cerberus to get out of his way. I owe you one, boy. One might suppose the prince's tale most likely ends akin to other tales of the heroes of our time. Like so. No, wait! Cerberus again accepts the sack. Bye for now, boy. The favor doing Zagreus then walks into a chamber black as night, but with a blood red pool. And from it comes a voice which says, Would you mind diving in these waters, Prince? To which the Prince replies, Oh, sure. Ah! Cerberus is busily considering upon what else to gnaw. The fearsome Cerberus accepts the satyr sack. See you, boy. Heading out. He cannot kill me like this every time, believes the underworld prince. He shall eventually have no more ideas. But the prince, as often as the case, is wrong. Ah! The watchdog Cerberus observes the prince. Vigilant Cerberus decides to look the other way this once. I can go. I have no new tales left to tell. But do not think that you have won, Prince Agrius. For any tale worth telling is a tale worth telling again and again. And again, bye-bye. Oh, no! The prince compels the multi-headed hound to let him pass. Thanks, boy. So joyfully did Zagreus attempt to gain the surface that why... He just rose too quickly. And we know how that one goes from Icarus's tale. Oh, damn it! After deliberating briefly, Cerberus concludes that yes, he shall accept the sack. Thank you, boy. I made it. Although there are innumerable ways for one to die, our danger-seeking prince has come to know a sizable variety. Ah! The hound.
hound of hell barely regards the prince, having been sated for the time. See you. More pets? More pets. Cerberus again accepts the sack. I owe you one, boy. Be right with you, father. The never-learning Zagreus, then, carelessly fell off a precipice or something, plunging him into the rapids of the Styx. Notoriously vicious Cerberus is watching quietly his master's court. Bye for now. Thus has the prince again persuaded fearsome Cerberus to get out of his way. Bye for now, boy. Cerberus cannot be bothered at this time. After deliberating briefly, Cerberus concludes that yes, he shall accept the sack. I can go. As he journeys to his mother's cottage in the cold, loudly speaking Zagreus calls out to hear the echo of his voice, the blast of sound, causing a substantive amount of ice and snow to break off from a nearby mountaintop and fall, and fall, and... Ah! Gigantic Cerberus accepts the prince's foul offering. Thank you, boy. Having gained the surface once again, Prince Zagris breathes deeply of the wildflowers and the roses and the like among which one of them contains an allergen so intolerably potent that it causes this. Again? Should check the admin chamber for the pack next mentioned. Buried deep within the archives, holding many binding packs between Lord Hades and the dead, resides an old agreement. In exchange for services from an extraordinary warrior, for eternity with an Elysium, for his dear partner. Should be able to approve a few revisions to that one with a house contractor, I think. Gigantic Cerberus accepts the prince's foul offering. Thanks, boy. Each violent countenance of Cerberus agrees the Sator Sack must be destroyed. See you, boy. One might suppose the Prince's tale most likely ends akin to other tales of the heroes of our time, like so. Cerberus lies as ever at the foot of his Lord Master's throne. Each violent countenance of Cerberus agrees the Sator Sack must be destroyed. I can go. Cerberus is comfortably at rest, observing all. Take care, boy. The fearsome Cerberus accepts the Sator Sack. Thanks, boy. After deliberating briefly, Cerberus concludes that yes, he shall accept the sack. Thank you, boy. I can do this. In his great hurry to explore the countryside, the hapless-footed prince steps on the peel of a most exotic, sallow-colored fruit and tumbles backward with such sudden, violent force that you know what occurs. No!
Cerberus acknowledges the prince with an affection tempered well with time. See you, boy. The guardian of hell itself decides the time has come for a short break and snack. See you, boy. Reflecting on his victory, Prince Zagris observes how death can take hold in so many different ways, at times quite slowly, and at other times. <laughs> the light provided by the flames of deepest hell enhances the lounging area with a soft glow, and their warmth soothes the few living denizens there. It's really quite cozy. The prince persuades the underworld's ferocious guardian to move aside. Bye for now, boy. Having achieved his goal, the underworld prince discovers that the mortal realm is utterly bereft of the life-threatening excitement to which he has grown accustomed, and the lack of anything of note to do, the sheer mundanity results in this. <laughs> Cerberus makes no attempt to move. A hidden stretch of the boundless river Styx cuts through misty Erebus, providing for the river boatman Charon, a locale in which to deal with the unruliest of souls. Nice place you got here, mate. Vigilant Cerberus decides to look the other way this once. I owe you one, boy. After defeating his Lord Father yet again, Prince Zagreus begins to shiver and catch cold. And, as is well known, there sadly is no cure for such a thing. Huh? Each violent countenance of Cerberus agrees the Sator Sack must be destroyed. I owe you one, boy. The Underworld Prince is getting rather good at this, but let us say he perished anyhow. Gah! Cerberus is busily considering upon what else to gnaw.